Man, got around. OG Simp back here. And today, just like each and every day that I'm alive on this great planet we call Earth, I'm going to share with you guys some stories of victory and glory. Some from my personal life and some from the observation of others. So you understand the victory of knowing that some places you don't want to be in and the glory when you realize it's better to be free than on the streets than in the belly of the beast where you can't flee like on the streets. Without further ado, I'm going to get into the topic of today's video, guys, which is going to be a real mind-expanding banger. It's going to blow your mind for those of you mofos who think you're tough and think you know everything. Get ready to have your minds blown wide open. The topic of today's video is, what will happen to your cheeks in maximum security prison? Depends on what type of person you are. So guys, I want to tell you why I had to make this video today. I made a video the other day talking about if P. Diddy is guilty and he owes a prison, what's going to happen to his cheeks? And I was telling you that based on my personal experience and observations of these high-powered, big-baller, gay dude, bisexual dudes with money, the same thing that's been happening to his cheeks on the street, they're going to get busted out by the people he pays or people that need to get a record deal, whatever the case may be. I don't follow that lifestyle, bro. I'm not, I'm, I was talking to somebody today. I'm really not even on social media. I'm on here to give penance to society and pay back my karmic debt, man, of the things I've done to people that look like me and others, man. I'm trying to be a righteous dude. I'm practicing Zen. I'm into Buddhism. I'm not a Buddhist, but I'm into the Buddhism and the Confucianism and Taoism, dude. If you Google those three terms, Man, you understand there's a bigger picture. So I'm trying to be a righteous dude as I'm in the last quarter of my life, bro. Because I'm seeing my own mortality. I'm sensing it. And I wanted to share this with you guys because, man, there's a lot of cats. <clears throat> and I don't know if I deleted the comments because I, I read the comments now because I don't need you guys that are on here, my faithful followers and new subscribers, to be seeing negativity on my channel. So if a comment is too negative, I delete it. But there's some comments, guys, come on here like, hey, OG Silverback, man, we don't like you talking about women, and we don't care about the Philippines and your travels. Hey, but since you're over there, we want you to go in the Philippines prison, get arrested, go to prison, so you can tell us what it's like in there. So first thing I want to tell you, man, is that's a crock of shit, dude. That's the dumbest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life, and... And that, that shows you don't care about me. And secondly, dude, I don't want to experience prison anymore. I've unfortunately experienced it. I tell you my stories so that you guys aren't bamboozled and beguiled and tricked to thinking that there's something heroic or awesome. Or you get your stripes by going to prison. Prison's the dumbest shit that's ever happened to me or happened to anybody, dude. Other than getting your dick and balls cut off and shoved up in your ass. Like the uh, the unsullied in the in the in the series Game of Thrones, man. Fuck that shit, bro. I always had never went to prison, but I did, and I'm sharing with you guys because I wasted ten years of my life. And while a lot of people say that made me battle tested and it made me a savage barbarian, I was a savage before I even went to prison. No, it may have made me a barbarian because I seen some, I did some barbaric shit in there. But I want to I want to save you guys this because everybody's not built for it. So that's why I had to make this video, guys, because I want to talk to you guys, especially all types of dudes, man. Square dudes, wannabe gangster dudes, uh, hip dudes, gangbanger dudes, drug dealing dudes, slick dudes, whatever the fuck you think you are, I'm going to tell you the reality. And to me, dude, level one and two are not prison. It's not real prison until you hit maximum security level four or five. And here's why, guys. At level four and five, there's no program. The only program is to survive and live another day and hopefully get out or do like me, get your points dropped so you can get the fuck out of that hellhole. Other than that, it's just chaos and murder and, ramp and rampant homosexuality, man. This is what I want to explain to you guys in this video. So I want to tell you ahead of time, it's going to be a long video. And those of you who are open to being enlightened and informed and learning the truth, because the truth shall set you free, buckle up. Get your popcorn and soda, because I'm going to blow the lid. Those of you who are ADHD, you want to see some bells and whistles and women chirking and shit, 
and flashy things and just click off now, man, because I'm I'm getting tired of talking to sorry motherfuckers and begging you to watch the whole video. So the rest of you guys, let's get into it. Here's the first thing, man. I want to tell you something. It doesn't make sense to go to a foreign country to get locked up, man, for a number of reasons. Number one, if you just want to be locked up, stay in your home state. Why? More likely you got uncles or cousins or friends or homeboys or associates, people that you know. May, heck, maybe some of the correctional officers or some of the lawyers or DAs or public defenders or bailiffs may be somebody you know or family members. So you have a sphere of influence. You have a protective bubble so you can be like Bubble Boy. I didn't have that experience when I got locked up in the California penal system. So when I experienced the hell and the travesty of being a lone wolf that through the tests of fires like the labors of Hercules made me a savage barbarian warrior beast. I don't wish that on anybody, man. So I'm going to tell you like this. If you're going to travel the world. Don't be like these people you hear about going to a foreign country and get locked up. Like my, my dude, Drew Danger, when I had caught COVID, he sent me some videos. He sent me this one video called Midnight Express. It tells about a dude who got locked up in the Turkish prison. It tells about the rampant homosexuality, dude, the brutality, the animalism, bro. The guards are corrupt in Turkey. Then, uh, then you, you guys all know about Shawshank Redemption. Talks about prison in America, the rampant homosexuality, the fucking crookedness of the guards. There's another movie called An Innocent Man. Talks about the crookedness of police, the homosexuality in prison. Then there's another movie called Lockdown. Talks about the homies. Your homies that you know from the street that have been locked up for 10, 20 years. You come in. Oh, man, I, that's Billy Bob. That's my homie. That's Jimmy Joe. Hey, homie, what's going on? Hey, man, I'm look out for you. Hey, anybody fuck with you. I got a rep. I'll take him out. You understand? Hey, thanks a lot, man. Hey, call your mama and your sister that haven't put money on my books, man. Okay, because you're my homeboy. And also because I'm protecting you. Well, that makes sense. Okay, man, get your cell moved to mine, man, so I can look out for you. All right, thanks a lot, Jimmy Joe, Billy Bob. Okay, lights out. Bedtime. Hey, my man, can you just lube up your, your butt cheeks? Because I want to make it easy on you. Hey, what are you talking about, man? We homies. Yeah, but that's right. But in here, the homies look out for each other, man. Ain't not protecting you, man? Ain't not looking out for you? Yeah, man, but I'm not gay. I ain't gay either, man. But we got to, you know, I'm in here for life, man. We got to do what we got to do, man. So just loop it up so it's easier. So I want to share this with you guys. Within all fiction is a many come of fact. So the guys that come on my channel to have the audacity, dude, the fucking skullduggery to tell me or you or anybody who will listen that there's no homosexuality in prison, either A, they're dumb as fuck, B, they're gay as fuck, or C, they've never been to maximum security prison with a bunch of life for murderers that ain't never, ever, ever getting out. And some of these guys are in the prime of their life, some guys are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. You still got testosterone pulsing through your veins, bro. And you got these gay dudes running around. There's only so many gay dudes. You got transvestites running around. You got soft dudes, and that's where it goes to the story. So I want to tell you like this, man. Don't go to a foreign country to get locked up because you don't know the rules of engagement. Then you're a foreigner, man. And it's just going to be a bad experience for you. So with that being said, I want to tell you this, man. Here in Southeast Asia, there's a lot of foreigners going to prison, dude. You see it on the news almost every day, if not every other day. And there's forums where the foreigners going to prison left and right. I don't want to be involved in that batch. And I'm going to tell you how I stay out of those situations before I get deep down and dirty. There's five reasons that foreigners go to prison out here. And I'm going to share this with you. Reason number one is drugs, bro. Man, in some countries, bro, like you remember that tall lady from the WNBA, I forget her name, but she got arrested uh, in Russia in the airport for having some marijuana, man. In, in America, some places marijuana is legal. And even if they catch you, dude, they ain't going to send you to prison. They'll just maybe give you a fine or something, maybe book you in the county jail. But it's not that serious in America. America is more liberated. But some places don't tolerate drugs, man. Here in the Philippines, if you're a drug dealer, they, they murder drug dealers. So what I'm saying to you is don't get involved with drugs, man, because uh, first of all, me, I don't believe in drugs because 
me training in martial arts every day, man, and working out and being healthy, I got the drug called endorphins, man, my own natural high, bro. I love my life. I'm living my best life here. But don't be involved in drugs. So I'm not involved in drugs, so I don't have to worry about that. Number two, there was illegal activity. You'll see on TV here, man, a lot of foreigners be involved in illegal activity, uh, one of which is there's a big scam now. So when you get your money from your bank, uh, let's say you got some American dollars, you have to convert it to Filipino pesos. So you go to the exchange, and what a lot of foreigners do, let's say you have $1,000, and then they, they convert it. What you'll say is like, hey, you shorted me. And then you make a big enough deal, they go ahead and uh, they'll give you the extra money. So maybe the person is an inside job. I just see it on the news a lot. That happens a lot, dude. A lot of, uh, just a lot of skullduggery. A lot of foreigners here are hacking the SIM cards because some guys are technologically like very advanced. They'll hack the SIM cards or they'll hack the Gcash and all kinds of scams, illegal stuff, man. Stay away from illegal activity. Me, myself, after getting out, I promised myself not to do anything illegal or bad or immoral. I'm trying to rise to a higher plane, so I stay away from that. Number three, dude, is messing with underage girls. I don't have that sickness or that problem, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, I don't put myself in those situations. That's not how I'm wired, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, number four is speaking badly about the government, bro. Southeast Asia, man, I'm not saying it's a communist country. I'm saying that they in America, you can talk stuff about your president and congressman freely. You got free speech here. Now, if you're a foreigner, you say some stuff about the government, they'll lock your ass up and throw away the fucking key. But here's number five I want to talk to you about, man. That You know, with the help of my beautiful girlfriend, Yoni, and me doing Buddhism and Zen meditation and Confucianism, Taoism, number five is getting into a fight with a local and killing them, bro. So me with my particular set of skills, I have to take it really easy to be calm all every day. And I'm not being disrespectful to Filipinos. I like it here. There's a lot of positives here, but I will tell you the cultural differences. In my opinion, a lot of Filipinos are very disrespectful. They'll cut in front of you like walking, bro. They'll bump into you. They don't respect your personal space. They stare at you. They mean mug you. They try to incite violence. They'll shout stuff out to you. Man, you just got to look at the big picture, baby, and keep your calm. Don't let nobody steal your happiness, dude, or take away your freedom. And so with the help of Yoni, it helps me to stay calm because I know with my skills, man. Man, those of you who have met me in person, you guys know. You came to California, I took you to my fighting gyms. You came to Vegas, I took you to my fighting gyms. Man, I do this, man, because why? I'm old, and I know that youngsters don't respect older people, so I have to be able to defend myself if I cannot flee. And with the arthritis in my legs, I can only run so fast. So if I say, hey, man, you know, leave me alone. I'm sorry if I bothered you, and I try to flee, and then you catch me. I'm going to pray to Jesus and Buddha Allah. Because, you know, guess what, man? Your ass is mine, man. Because I tried to run. You wouldn't let me. I tried to practice stoicism. You wouldn't let me. I'm going to negate the situation. So I try to avoid that. I've been lucky so so far. And plus, based on what I've been told, I wouldn't make it in prison here. Because, uh, like I said, no offense, this is not a, a bad video. I'm just telling the truth. But Filipinos, man, they, they, they jump foreigners, man. And if you get in a fight with a Filipino, ain't no one-on-one, -on -one, man. They jump 400, bro. And this is not a Bruce Lee movie where you can just fight hundreds of dudes with your technique. Get the fuck out of here. This is real life. You're going to run out of gas. You're surrounded. Come on, man. This ain't a movie, man. So I just avoid all that, dude. I avoid all that, dude. I'll run. I even, you know, I'm just like, I'm trying to be... A loving, kind dude. So I check myself, man. But let me tell you something, man. A lot of you guys listen to your homies who say there is no butt play in prison. This is what your homies tell you. Oh, man, OG's lying. He's capping. He's full of shit. That's why the brothers don't fuck with OG. That's why the Vatos don't fuck with OG. That's why the Woods don't fuck with OG. That's why the others and ages don't fuck with OG. Well, let me tell you something, man. 
Those of you who want to listen to fairy tales and bullshit, don't fuck with me either because, dude, the truth is the truth. And here's the logical thing I want you to understand is this, man. Either your homie is lying because he's gay, he's practicing butt sex, or he has never been to maximum security prison with lifers who are never getting out. Let me repeat that again. Either your homie is lying because he's gay, he wants to cover up his behind the walls butt play activity because maybe he was getting his butt cheeks pounded and he's ashamed to tell you, so he's lying. I got it. Or he's never been to maximum security prison with lifers who are never getting out. Look at this logically, guys. Let's look at yourself. I don't care if you're 16, 26, 36, 46, heck, even 56. At 62, I still have a high sex drive, bro. It's just like sex is not my main priority. But you know what? I don't, I don't mind being intimate, man, with my girlfriend. I love her. And, you know, we care about each other. It's just human nature to want to be intimate, dude. And so you take this, whether you're 16, 26, 36, 46, 56, you have a natural sex drive. Human beings are naturally attracted to intimacy and sex. So then you go to prison. And you're there for the rest of your fucking life. And just so you know, in California, lifers cannot get conjugal visits. Why? Because a conjugal visit, while it's inside of the prison walls, is not inside of where the yard is. Yeah, it's inside where the yard is, but it's outside the yard. So it's inside the prison walls, but it's outside where the yard is. And if a lifer may never get out, he might take his wife hostage or his kids hostage. Be like, hey, motherfucker, if you don't let me out, I'm killing everybody. So to prevent that, lifers can't get conjugal visits. So here you got their natural hormone, hormonal activity, natural sex drive, bro. And you can only whack your willy so long. I've told you guys this in countless videos. And then, dude, let me tell you something, man. I want to explain this to you. In prison, men have relationships, bro. Because there's not enough openly gay butt cheek dudes to go around. So what that means is uh, if you and your homie are from the Hoover Dam or you guys are from, you know, the fucking, uh, you guys are from the jungles or wherever the fuck you're from, East Side Vato Loco, wherever the fuck you're from, and you guys are silly and you guys have, you know, a relationship from the street like you as homies, you guys are going to do it on the under and do it between yourselves because it's safe. You ain't got to worry about AIDS, hopefully. You can just bust each other's cheeks. Nobody will know, but you and him. You develop your bond. And you keep it hush-hush. But let's say some other guys, man. They got whether you're from the wood car, you're from the brothers, Asians, the, the Hispanics. You got your little boyfriend, little girlfriend in there. Go to Laughing with Lucky's channel. He'll tell you the truth. You got your little boyfriend and girlfriend in there, and you guys keep it just together like that. It's a relationship. You love each other. And then there's openly gay dudes that they, they might sell their butt cheeks, but dude, it's only so many guys can bust their cheeks per day. So then you got guys, man, who don't have money. They don't have a boyfriend in there or a girlfriend, bro. And then they're horny. They're life for They ain't never getting out. Let's say the dude's a murderer. He's a savage. He don't need to pay a motherfucker canteen. He don't need to fucking get a girlfriend. He don't need to do none of that because he'll just see a new dude coming in, soft dude. They call him New Booty. And the dude's not affiliated, he's by himself, he's a lifer, he's a square dude. And he's just take it, man. Lifers can get people put in their cells or taken out of their cells whenever they want. Why? They're in there for life. They're part of the real estate. So let me tell you the guys this really quick. So lifers and murderers prey on the weak and the soft. And I'm going to say that again. Lifers and murderers. Most lifers are murderers. Like you don't get life in prison unless you murder somebody. Or you did something really, really, really heinous. I, don't, I can't think it was more heinous than murder. But say you did kidnapping, kidnapping, torture, bodily dismemberment, uh, serial child pedophile. I mean, just the charges add up in the compound. But normally lifers are murderers, right? So they don't give a f Man, let me tell you something about a lifer, dude. This is what lifers. This is why my martial arts skills got so good. Because you're in a catch-22. If you're a lone wolf like me, you're not, you don't want to get with the gangs because there's a cost. I'm going to go into this in this video. If you weren't a gang member on the street and you come in and then the gang members, like, for example, the Mexican gangs, the Norteños wanted me to get in their gang, the Serenos, because my last name is Gomez, 
I'm like, nah, if you wasn't a gang member on the street, you join the gang. There's a cost. And this all you guys hear this stuff. Blood in, blood out. You thinking that means, oh, you know, you got to stab to get in the gang or beat up. Yeah, they do that. But there's blood in your culo homes because that's how they know they build solidarity. So you wasn't a gang member on the street. You want to join the gang for protection, bro? First of all, they're going to have you doing a lot of stupid shit like torpedo work. And then they all going to go up in your culo to show how badly you want to join the gang. So that's a losing proposition. But here's the thing, man. I want to point this out to you, man. Here's the here's how you know what will, what will happen to your cheeks in prison in maximum security. I'm talking to you, you guys, your cheeks. And I'm going to describe the different types of dudes so you're going to know what's going to happen to your cheeks, either willingly or unwillingly. And if it's unwillingly, I feel bad for you. If you go to prison and you find out you've been secretly gay all this time, you just didn't know it, then hey, man, more power to you, brother. But if you go into prison, you're not gay like me, you're heterosexual, you love women, and you don't like men, funky, smelly men, going up in their cool or they going up in yours, and then you're forced to do it, it's going to be a mind fuck. You're going to be fucked up, and you're going to come out hating OG. Shut the fuck up. OG's a liar. He's a fraud. That motherfucker's lying. He's full of shit. Don't watch his channel. Unsubscribe. Report him to YouTube. Shadow ban him. Yeah, okay. Your secret's not safe with me, motherfucker. Here's the type of guys, man. If you are a follower, your cheeks are going to be ramrodded, ripped open, and split open by every little gang you try to join or the people that are protecting you or the people that's looking out for you, your homies. Because you're a follower. You do whatever the fuck you're told because you're scared and you need to survive, motherfucker. So they're going to just... They can smell the fear on you, dude. It's like a dog. They can smell when you're scared. So if you're a follower, I would tell you, don't go to prison, bro. Don't do it, man. Your butt cheeks. And here's a problem, man, I want to share with you guys that you understand. Me, personally, I don't really subscribe to gay sex unless it's two women together. And one of them happens to be my girlfriend, and she brings her lover. I'm all for that. Yeah, hey, give a hand of applause. But two funky, sweaty men... Nah, because see, they each got a penis, and that penis got to go somewhere. So maybe you're the bottom, but maybe you're the top, and maybe you flip flop. And here's the problem in prison: a lot of guys are intravenous drug users. Man, they have AIDS, bro, HIV, and when somebody's forcibly taking your butt cheeks and they busting nuts deep up in your fucking culo or your spinkster, there's a high probability you're gonna get AIDS or or Hep C or HIV, dude, or all kind of diseases that weren't yours. But now you own them because you're soft. And now you got a death sentence. I made a video years ago that getting your culo forcefully taken is a death sentence because you don't know if the dude's got AIDS or herpes or hep C, hep V. Quit being a victim. The next guy is if you are a drug addict, bro, your cheeks will be violently ripped open and splattered and ripped. Because here's what happens, dude. There's drugs in prison, man. And if you're a drug addict, most drug addicts don't know how to control their drug addiction. They don't know how to handle their money. So, you know, what they'll do in prison is they'll front you some drugs. Oh, yeah, Holmes. And then when your canteen comes, Vato, you pay me back the money. Yeah, I would. Hey, brother, here's a front you this here sack. And when your package comes in, brother, you pay me back. And then, and then the black dude's be like, yeah, my man, I'm going to front you this. You know what I'm saying? But then when you get your money, you're going to pay me back double because I'm fronting this interest, right? And you don't pay them back. Let me tell you something, man. Not only do you get your ass kicked, you get your ass split open. For some reason, when you cross a dude in prison, not only do they beat your ass to show you dominance and you subjugated, they go up in your culo because that's what they wanted to do in the first place. So if you're a drug addict, don't go to prison, man. Don't do it, man. Go to a methadone clinic or go to a drug rehab treatment. So you quit committing crimes. If you're a drug addict, you're going to prison, your cheeks will be ripped and ripped and ripped and ruptured. If you are a gang member, then you already know what I'm going to say, man. You, you know, you, for, to, to maintain the solidarity of your gang, dude, and the strength of the numbers and, and the, you know, to keep the familia bond. Gang members practice more butt play than anybody. That's why my channel... 
the subscribers have been going down because the gang members share my channel with each other and they unsubscribe and they say, hey, don't fuck with OG Sub, but he's exposing the truth. So if you're a gang member, dude, your butt cheeks is going to be ran up in, but not forcefully because they're going to convince you like, this is the right thing to do. We look out for each other. We get love to the homies like that. And if you don't believe me, watch this movie called Lockdown and watch this other movie called South Central. Yeah, watch this other movie called... Um, uh, no, those are good enough movies for you right there. Watch those movies and you'll see what the fuck I'm talking about. So last but not least, if you're a square or a loner, wow. This is the biggest problem because, dude, if you're a square and you went to prison for, you know, you caught your girlfriend cheating on you, you got a, you know, a crime of passion, you killed her like the dude and a Shawshank Redemption, you know, are you in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, wrong side of town, mess with the wrong people, like Drew Danger one time accidentally just got involved with some gang members, he didn't know they was gang members, because gang members can fool you in some cities, they, they act like normal people, they're really gangsters. So you got to be careful who you associate with, if you're a square dude, you're a tax paying citizen, you go to prison, you got to understand there's generations of people in prison, uncles, cousins, brothers, sons, fathers, grandfathers. They all know each other, man. You coming in square, you don't know nobody. You from the other side of town. Bro, they're going to tell you like they did in the movie uh, Innocent Man. You got to ride with your people. And if not, the other people can tell, like the other races can tell. The reason you ride with your people is so that your people that are your race, ethnicity, the only ones can go up in your butt cheeks. Because otherwise, you'll have the blacks and the Asians and the Mexicans going up in you. And they're going to pass you around to all their homies because Stoop Dog made a made a song, so ain't no fun unless the homies can have some. You gotta listen to these rap lyrics. They telling you the truth about what's about to happen to your butt cheeks. So here's the last one. If you're a loner man like me, dude, and you know, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Now that I'm practicing Zen Buddhist, Buddhism and Confucianism and Taoism, man, and meditation and Stoicism, dude, I'm one with the universe. I look back on my life and I think that I made my time in prison harder than it could have been. Like I could have rolled with the others. I could have rolled with the blacks. I could have rolled with the Mexicans. I couldn't rob with the whites because in, in California, if you're not white, you can't rob with the woods. But I had a lot of opportunities, man, you know, to rap with different groups. But I chose not to. When I did that, I signed my own death certificate, meaning that you know, because people ask before they do stuff to you. Hey, man, that dude, he belonged to your car. Nah, man, that motherfucker's a loner, man. He's a square dude. He's a weird dude. All he does is read the Bible and the Quran, dude, and the book of Confucianism, and he practices that thing funk shit. That shit don't work. I'll fuck him up. Oh, really? So you don't mind if I go up in his cheeks? Nah, man, we don't know that motherfucker. So the dude be like, hey, hey, my man, what's your name? We be like, Hey, check it out. I know you ain't talking to me, my man, because first of all, I don't know you, and you don't want to know me. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay, man, check this out, dude. This conversation's over unless you want to meet Jesus. And I say that, guys, why? There's the guards there, and there's people in the yard, and there's cameras. I want everybody to see this motherfucker throw the first punch, because I was talking to one of my loved ones the other day, and I'm going to share this with you guys. You guys... Especially you troll soft motherfuckers. I shared this with my loved one. Like 80% of my fights in prison on the street and cage fighting was one with judo. Why? Because when you incite a dude there's not in control of his emotions, they always come with a wild punch or they wind up. And then when you block it, you just put your hand under their underarm, bro, turn and kiss their ass goodbye. Because you judo toss them face first into the pavement or to a metal table or to a metal sink or into the wall. Bam! Like that. And then watch him crumble as you stomp him. Then the guards say, everybody down! They start shooting. Doom, 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 doom! And then this is my friends of what you will understand. Unless you took my advice and you're studying Muay Thai and kickboxing and MMA and you're getting your ass kicked on the streets and I say this to you, my friend. Stay on the square side of the law and stay out of trouble because you don't have the skills that I have and your butt cheeks will be so wide and split open to be like the Holland Tunnel. Every time you fart, it'll be like, hello, hello, hello.